All right, this is a little uh, walkthrough of this uh, Drummond Mark II hand shaper. This particular one, I think, was from the 20s, uh, 1920s, I think. Yeah, 19, light is not fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Flash has just come on. Yeah, light torch has just come on. It's got a paint. It's got a little bit of information there. I'm not sure because the angle that I'm looking at this screen at the moment, I can't really see what if it's all in focus or not but uh, that's the patent dates on it uh, this was a little bit crapped up I'm a little bit of ashamed really when I restored this one uh, when I took it apart to clean it because I didn't have metric da uh, metric taps metric screws, uh, sorry imperial uh, dies and screws and whatnot. so I metricised it all these, I've still got to get round to it, but these that are sticking up at the moment, these M8 and M6 set screws. I've got some in the carriage here, the knee, and a few others around. Um, I'm going to change those, so, I'll get short, uh, so I'm going to get some shorter screws so they're sunk in, possibly some black ones as well. Uh, phosphated I think, black phosphated screws so they're blending a lot better than these silver stainless steel ones that stick out but this is a little bit of a walkthrough for, uh, for it this is the best type of, uh, this is the best design hand shaper that I've seen with the most features on it it's pretty much like a milling machine like a new milling machine you've got the wheel underneath there on a screw and you turn that to raise to raise the entire bed up and down on a knee it's kind of like a knee well kind of it is a knee you turn it that way up and it raises so you can uh, raise it with that wheel the only downside is you need a hole in the bench because the screw does go down lower so <clears throat> you need to mount you need to put a hole in the bench but that's not that much of a problem it definitely needs to be mounted to the bench because the force that you uh, that you use to pull it back you'll end up just yanking it off um the head raises up and down as well that's a little bit tight i've got to adjust those i've adjusted those pretty tight but you, uh, but you screw that and that raises the head up and down on the ram You've got this here, so you can do dovetails. I haven't got. Does that one fit? I doubt it, because this is metric. No. But you loosen that off, and this whole unit, this uh, this crapper box in the back, casting for it rotates, so you can set it for dovetails. So you'd set that, and you raise it up and down with the dial at the top uh, for doing dovetails. The clapper box is a solid block, uh, sorry not a solid block, it's a two part block uh, that's very rigid. I prefer that over the turret style, uh, what they're called, I haven't got a mind on me today. But you get the Atlas, Atlas style, the American style, uh, the stick out and then you have the tool sticking down from that. Uh, I prefer these because you can get the tool a lot further back as well and it seems a lot more rigid um, the what else the table itself as you can see has got a circular T-slot in it you've got to be careful though because it has got an inherent problem with that these corners snap off I didn't do that, that was a pre uh, previous owner um, if you get that just at the right position and you tighten down it will put a lot of stress on that corner so you've got to be careful if you get one of these this is the Mark II Drummond hand shaper so the, I think the Mark II has got this circular T-slot in the Mark I is just straight T-slots it's got a hole in the centre there obviously for the vice so it stays centred um, the feed, you can do it manually, you've got the pole here, you 
just pull that pin and rotate it um, and then you can move it by hand or you engage the port again and that does the feed and it's uh, just like a ratchet design uh, to this 20 tooth gear um, and then just pull the lever so that's that cutting that's cutting and then when you push back that feeds the table to the side I've got this set up at the moment for I'll do a video a little bit later on uh, in, in this video um, I've got it set up for the actual stroke that I needed it to uh, needed it to be you yeah, just the straight bar this by loosening that off and rotating rotating this pin so as you can see there I've got it set up it comes out yeah you know I mean so it's so it's not fit so it's the gear isn't being turned at the moment and then it moves so at the moment it's not adjusting and then it moves so it's set so it's set at the moment for the actual work I need to do if you need less of a feed if you need it to move, uh, move less you'd adjust that so it pops out earlier if you need the maximum amount of movement you'd adjust it so the full stroke is turning that sorry the foot the full stro uh, full stroke is turning this so turning this gear so then it moves the maximum distance that it can I'll get the vice on it and I'll be back in a sec alright this is the vice for the Drummond uh, Mark II Shaper or Mark I in fact I think, yeah, I think this works for the Mark I as well I doubt it because it's got the tip that circular T-slot. This would be at a 45 degree angle, wouldn't it? So I think for the uh, for the Mark One that hasn't got the circular T-slot, I think it'll have a different vice. Well, it will have a different vice. The good thing is it's got an adjust. It hasn't got. You can see there it hasn't got a lot of adjustment. But I'll take this screw out, and it's got a grub screw just there you'd move that screw to there and then these screws, the whole idea of these screws is to stop swarf going down into the actual threads um, or you've got the movement there as well you can alternate these wherever you need them to be so then you screw the actual movable jaw down for the size of the work that you're doing so I'm just going to do this hand tight because I can't find my imperial <laughs> hex key wrong way and the good thing is because it rotates it puts the pressure on it at one, one position uh, it's not a jaw that moves just straight you can rotate it slightly so if you've got a block of steel it's, you've got a nice flat edge on one side but the other side is a little bit rough or not flattened yet when you tighten it down it auto adjusts for the angle that you're tightening down on the good thing as well if you've got a circle if you've got a disc um, if you've got a round that you want to plane the top of it that you want to shape the top of it you can stick it slightly to the side and when you put the pressure on it's working in that direction. Uh, which direction does it feed? It feeds from right to left, the Drummond does. So, what you do is you'd angle it, put the disc in, and the force that it's creating to the side isn't going to slip it out because it's, ang uh, it's angled. You'll get, you'll get what I mean anyway, don't you? Hopefully. But I'll tighten that down and then I'll start doing some shaping. Right, you'll have to excuse the mess. 
I've got it angled so you can see the whole mechanism here. So if you do manage to find one of these and it's not in full condition, full working condition, say you've got the body, you've got most of it, but some of this is missing. At least then you can see how it works. Uh, the Mark 1, the actual main section here that, that connects to the casting, uh, is a separate piece and it's bolted to the casting. The Mark 2, it's all one piece. So, uh, so this flat bar here uh, is pivoted on the actual casting itself. Uh, that's one of the main differences of the between the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 and also obviously the bed. That when you pull when you pull the bar at the top, it rotates this bar, obviously rotates that. That pin rests inside a slot in this flat bar and pops out. Um, and pops out depending on how you set it. That obviously pulls this bar, levers this pull, which turns the lead screw. Uh, the the pull obviously has got a spring adjust uh, spring pin on it, so I can just do that, and it's not moving the carriage. So you can do like single cuts, move down, move down. Uh, so you do like a deep groove. Or a dovetail, in fact, if you're doing a dovetail, you don't want the bed moving. You want to adjust this, you, you want to adjust the head manually. Um, so you just pop that out and then each time you do the stroke, you're going in the same plane, the bed isn't actually moving itself. So I'll leave that in because I'm going to be doing uh, flat at the top of this very rough piece of steel now. So it's I've set it to the height that I want it to go but it's not actually that hard I'm doing this little video at the moment but I'm going to put an extra section on the end that shows well from last night doing an actual piece that I wanted to work on something that's the ram hitting this so that's another thing one thing that I haven't had before what I can do is lower the bed yeah it's still hitting so lower the bed more that's it so the ram can go further only just just to wait, adjust the wheel to bring the head down. You'd obviously do that to start with, because now you're going to have different heights. This is just messing about. That's it. So I've got the full stroke back lock that goes over the top. That's now got to that open section because of slot in this. That's a steel again. And I've got the camera. I'm just going to shake a little bit, and that is the surface quality of it. That would be a lot better if I had more control strokes. Plus that dark stroke there is where I adjusted it, so it's not so I'd missed that. You, you know what I mean? You'd set you'd set the base and the head correct before you even start. <laughs> uh, what else is there? I can tell you about it. Can't think of anything else. So yeah, that's the end of this section and what I'll do now is I'll put a section on the end 
of what I'm doing with this piece. Come to think about it, I'm not taking it out of the mill yet. The, the shape, uh, shape of work that I did last night was on the bottom of this to make it tr uh, truly flat. Um, I've bored, used, a bo uh, used a boring bar, uh, boring head to go all the way through and also got a bit of a wider recess there. So the shaft that I'm going to put in there is going to have like a register on it. So, uh, so it's so it's held as rigid as possible and then tightened down from the bottom somehow. Uh, and then that is going to be a similar design to this. Obviously that's all as one casting. Um, to drop tool holders on like that. And you tighten it from, uh, from the side and you put the tool piece in there little bit in there and that's adjustable and it is surprisingly rigid because you've got this bolt here that tightens down that you adjust and that goes all the way through through the bottom so you get the actual height that you want it to be and then tighten it and that is incredibly rigid uh, a lot more rigid than the setup that I had before because it's to replace a top slide this top slide is not very rigid at all um, I had, of course it's not fantastic but you just stick a quick, quick change tool post on it and that's the tool height. It's very high. Um, so the whole idea is to make a block for, 99, uh, for turning 99 times out of 100 what I'd do is just straight turning on the straight sides or facing off. So all I'd need is a block of steel to then have that on the top and just rotate it how I need it to go and just do straight left uh, left and right or fall back. And if I do need to taper, if I do need to do a uh, taper turning, I'll just then swap it for the normal top slide and figure out a different way to hold the tool. So anyway, that's digression over and done with, but that's just explaining what I was doing with the chunk of steel that you're going to see next. And I'll stick, uh, I'll, I'll now stick the video that I've already made, that I've stuck on Facebook, on the end of this. Later that same evening. thousand years later. Three thousand years later.